I have stressed to you before the importance of having a random sample. How do we get a good random sample? And why do we want one? Let's begin with a review. Using our analogy of cooking, we want to know whether the kettle of stew is perfectly prepared. Does it need more salt? Have the beans cooked long enough? To answer that question, we do not have to eat a whole bowl of soup. We can learn everything we need to know about the entire population with a spoonful, as long as that spoonful is representative of what is in the kettle. The best way to get a representative sample is to use a random sample. A random sample does not guarantee that the sample will be representative, but it is the best way that we have to get close. We can use either random or non-random sampling techniques to get our sample. Let me start with the simplest, most basic approach to random sampling. It's called simple random sampling. Here is our population. In a random sample, each element has an equal chance of being selected. And because every element has an equal chance, there is a greater likelihood that at least one of every element from that population will be represented in our sample. How could we do simple random sampling? In a raffle, we put tickets into a hopper, spin it around, and draw out one ticket at a time. Every ticket in the hopper has an equal chance of being selected. Or we use a lottery method, such as ping pong balls with numbers written on them. Every ping pong ball in that population has an equal chance of being selected. Or perhaps we could simply write each person's name on a piece of paper, put all of those pieces of paper into a hat, stir it around, and select names at random. In every case, each individual has an equal chance of being selected. We can also do random sampling using Excel or other statistical software. In Excel, we will use the R-A-N-D or RAND function. The RAND function can be used in Excel with the SORT function in order to randomize a list of names and bring certain names to the top. There are many advantages of using simple random sampling. And the first is simple random sampling is easy, simple to understand, and perceived as fair to everyone. However, we do have the problem of sampling error, especially if the tickets in the hopper or the names in the hat or the ping pong balls are not sufficiently randomized, we could have a non-random sample. Another disadvantage of simple random sampling is that it can be resource intensive, increasing the amount of time or money required to get a good sample. Now let me show you a real world example of a sample that was not sufficiently randomized. In 1969, America experienced the first Vietnam draft lottery. This was a lottery to determine which young men in America would be selected to serve in the Vietnam War. A slip of paper containing a day and month of the year was placed inside a capsule, 366 capsules because leap year was included. The capsules were stirred with a board that had once been a floorboard in Independence Hall. And Congressman Alexander Pierney drew the first capsule for the Selective Service draft. The drawing continued until all capsules had been selected. Those dates were listed in random order, and it determined whether or not you would serve in Vietnam if you were a young man in 1969. Later analysis of that order revealed that it was not entirely random. What had occurred was that the early birth dates were placed in first. January went in first, followed by February, and at the top was November and December. 
the stirring was not complete, and so there was an overrepresentation of young men called from October, November, December, instead of earlier in the year. The non-randomness of the selection led to skepticism about the fairness of that draft lottery, and it was, in fact, fixed in the following year. Regardless of whether you are a young man who could be drafted, would you like to know how you would have fared in the 1969 draft? I've included some links to pages and other information about this supposedly random sample that could help tell you more about where you would have fallen and give you a better understanding of what that draft lottery was like for the people who lived through it. Next, we're going to look at other random sampling techniques. Thank you.